Hi my darlings, it's your girl Duchess Charm and welcome to another Monday Wait, no Hi my darlings, it's your girl Duchess Charm and happy Monday and y'all know what Monday means it is time for crime and conviction if y'all see that I'm missing any time any week whatever y'all can just head over to my community tab and see what's happening because I try my best to update you guys on my community tab I know that some of you guys aren't on my social media pages you guys aren't on my social media pages and based on what happened I wasn't able to update my social media pages but I was able to update my community tab so I kept you guys updated that way but I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend and you are ready to start off this beautiful beautiful week with me and of course we have a story and we're going to be talking about Delroy Uzi Edwards Delroy Uzi Edwards was born on December 15, 1959. We share the same sign. He grew up in the inner city communities of Tivoli Gardens. In 1980, at the age of 20, Delroy was one of the gang members working for a political party. Now, if you guys don't know, I think I've said it in multiple crime and conviction videos, that in 1980, it was one of the bloodiest political years ever. And also, it is said that there are certain members of a certain political party that would hire gang members to like keep the order or whatever. So at age 20, he was one of these gang members that were given guns to go out and patrol the streets and wreak havoc practically. Now, Delroy Uzi Edwards was nicknamed Uzi because he used to carry a Uzi submachine and that was his weapon of choice. I'm laughing because the word Uzi just sounds so funny to me. Anyways, after the 1980 election where Edward Siaga did win, he was, you know, JLP, he started to crack down on the street violence and a lot of these gang members felt it and they decided to migrate to the US of A. Delroy landed in Brooklyn with his tourist visa and at first he started to sell nickel bags of ganja but at the beginning of 1985 he learned how to make crack and soon enough he added that to his inventory. He sold the product at two hotspots in Brooklyn and poor black drug addicts used to cough up enough $5 and $10 that Delroy could purchase a $150,000 home. He paid for it in cash. He used literally $10 and $20 bills to purchase this home. Wow. I would actually be pissed if I was the realtor that had to count out that money. That, though, was not enough for Delroy, and as usual, the greed got to him and he wanted more. After he thought this out, he realized that New York was flooded with crack dealers. However, outside the city was uncharted territory. In the fall of 1986, Delroy chose Washington to expand his empire and he traveled there to set up shop. And by spring, his workers had set up thriving businesses in Philadelphia and in Baltimore. Delroy was one of the first ever dealers to introduce crack in the U.S. And this, obviously, was very profitable for him. His drug organization called Renkos, which was the same name as his political gang back in Jamaica, employed about 50 persons and they were making from $40,000 to $100,000 a day. Delroy was living his life, selling his crack, selling his marijuana. He was making his money. But of course, as usual, ego came into play. And, uh, you know, that was his downfall. Delroy was described as pathologically violent. And people that crossed him, of course, they faced grave consequences. 17-year-old Norman Awood was one of the persons that faced the wrath of Delroy. Norman, at 17, was the youngest Renka's soldier. But it was said that he was also a liability. He would often be short on the crack money or would steal from the stash. And of course, big, big disrespect that. So a few weeks before his ultimate demise, 
are his ultimate punishment, Norman was short on some crack money. So Delroy shot him in the leg as a warning. He didn't learn from this experience and unfortunately, Norman was caught stealing some crack once again. Norman was beaten with a baseball bat until he was unconscious and when he came to, hot water was poured all over his body. It is said that you could see the skin stripping off Norman. Norman was still alive so they hung him with chains from a basement ceiling and later on that night he died. They took him down, wrapped his dead body in plastic and he was later found on a Brooklyn street. Being a gang leader came with attempts at Delroy's life. In September 1987, Delroy was shot and he suspected that this attack came from a rival Jamaican gang. Delroy then ordered one of his soldiers to go to a corner in Brooklyn called bed -Stuy and to shoot anybody that looks Jamaican. That looks Jamaican. Wow. Unfortunately, an innocent man that was a musician was left paralyzed due to gunshot wounds. By this time, based on the rise in the drug distribution and of course the violence that follows the drug distribution, you know, the gang violence and everything, the US implemented the war on drugs operation and it came to no shock to anybody that Delroy's gang was on this list. The law had finally caught up to Delroy on March 9th, 1988 when he was arrested. Surprisingly, at least surprisingly to me, Delroy was not arrested on drug related charges. He was actually arrested in connection to a murder that took place at a club which involved an incident where someone stepped on Delroy's foot. By the time Delroy's trial came around, it was revealed that his second in command, Kenneth Manning, and 13 others had betrayed him. They were working with the police, willing to testify to bring Delroy down. During Delroy's trial, he rocked his Jerry Curl low faded hairstyle and his diamond earring, and he sported some nice, dark gray suits while he listened to these testimonies against him. The testimonies involved recalling the gang's ruthlessness and most of these hits were ordered by Delroy, the gang's leader. He was depicted as a cold-hearted, brutal, vicious killer. It was argued by Delroy's defense, of course, that most of these witnesses just testified and lied because they were being handed lesser sentences. The trial lasted for six weeks and at the end of it all, he was found guilty of 42 charges which included six murders, 17 assaults, weapon and drug related charges. On December 1st, 1989, Delroy was sentenced to seven consecutive life sentences. So that simply means, more than likely, Delroy will die in prison. He was 30 years old on the day that he was found guilty. Also, among the six murder charges, it included four of his own gang members, which of course included the 17-year-old. This trial and of course his conviction came as a big victory for the US government because they were trying to get a big break in the war on drugs operation. Now, Delroy's story actually doesn't end there. It gets more interesting for me at least. Delroy actually has a blog and of course I will be linking it down below in the description box along with all of my other sources. Trust me, I think that you guys should go and check out the blog but we're going to discuss it for a hot minute. So his blog was created five years ago in March 2015 and it starts off with an introduction which is actually an apology and he begged his children for forgiveness. It's surprising to me because I didn't read anywhere that he had kids, so wow. I thought that his introduction was pretty nice, um, but then his second post came in May of that same year, and it was like a breakdown of the case. 
obviously he tells his story through his eyes and he has all right to do that and i'm not judging him for that so practically he recounted his life in jamaica not all of it but like some of it and then his life in the u.s a little bit um it was mainly semantics in my eyes you know he spoke about um politics and politics in the u.s and stuff like that oppression the usual things that these convicts speak about he said that he was no gang leader he was no murderer he practically made himself out to be a victim saying that he was a low-level drug dealer that was just a scapegoat he spoke about the incompetence of his defense team and then he also pleaded his innocence saying that he was essentially set up he said that all these witnesses had a motive to lie to set him up that there was incentives and of course he just wanted to get his story out there and he wanted to be the one to tell his story and then there was also a little insert in there that he said, you know, he really does not care about what anybody else has assumed about him. Um, but he just wants it out there. So he only made two posts in 2015. And then in 2016, he posted um, trivial stuff. He was sharing his thoughts. He spoke about Kanye West. He spoke about Donald Trump's election, which was so long ago like 2016 just so far anyways he spoke on that um just you know trivial stuff like nothing really really important but the post that caught my eye was the one where he titled the call where he called his sister and i think this post if you guys don't read anything else on the page, I think that you guys need to read this post. There was nothing humbling about that post whatsoever. I'll be linking that as well. I won't be reading the full post. I'll just be summarizing. He hadn't spoken to his um, younger sister in over 25 years. However, he finally had the opportunity to call her. So he did and she did not pick up and he was upset about this and he even mentioned the fact that he paid for the call you know so that was the first line that stood out to me he mentioned her name her full name and then he said that she's a lawyer now and she has abandoned him and left him to waste away in the system essentially and it had been almost 30 years and she had not paid him a single visit. He mentioned some of the things that he did for her, which included buying her her first um, television set and feeding her when her father had died and taking care of her. And he said that there were certain sacrifices that he had to make to ensure that she was okay. And he even went as far as to say that she was so ungrateful. He even questioned her intellect, saying that maybe she isn't as intelligent as I thought she is or people make her out to be. And um, he was acting very entitled. He said that he deserved to have this conversation with her. You know, she should have picked up the phone. However, he bears no ill will towards her. And the thing that I had an issue with is him feeling so entitled the entitlement on that whole post if she did not pick up okay she did not pick up move on you know you're painted in such a light maybe you were sent to prison when she could not form an opinion about you and know that she is at a certain level in her life she's choosing to like separate from you based on everything that she has heard or maybe she has looked into his case and said wow there's nothing i can do and the relationship right here is dead because personally not because someone is your family means that you are obligated to talk to them are obligated to do certain things for them or take care of them and i am a big believer of this if someone doesn't mean good to you or for you or whatever you can cut them off so the whole post with the entitlement it just it really painted him in a certain light that did not look good in my eyes like he was already not looking good in my eyes this post solidified it for me anyways with his other post i don't think there was anything that really drew my interest per se over the next couple years which is 2017 to 2019 because that was his last blog post 2019 um he just shared his thoughts on certain um topics 
um, he wrote an open letter he shared some jokes like it was just simple stuff so I would encourage you guys to go on and check out his blog it's interesting like you can get like a feel of the type of person that he is um, also he has a Facebook page but on his Facebook page he mainly just shared stuff from his blog and he hasn't posted on his Facebook page since 2018 on his blog you can also write comments i've seen him answer a few of the comments but um you can also write him as a pen pal i will list his pen pal post below as well but i'm just a messenger i'm not encouraging all of my followers to go over there and to write to this man if you guys want to y'all are allowed to do that you know but i'm just a messenger so i'm not saying you know what everybody go on over there so go write to him or whatever no so on the post that he put up he was practically just saying that he's looking for meaningful friendships um that he's lonely after all of these years in prison it's finally getting to him so he just wants to speak with anybody regardless of who you are he wants to have meaningful conversations and he also stated that you know he is putting himself out there and don't miss out on the opportunity for a wonderful friendship and to be honest regardless of what he has done everyone deserves a friend you know and he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison so if he does find someone that he can talk to that he can write jokes with and whatever to make his prison life a bit more um, bearable I think that would be a wonderful thing he is also now a follower of the Rastafari faith and I don't know if he's in contact with his children but I do know that he's in contact with some of his family members still. As it relates to Kenneth Manning, his right hand man, his second in command that helped put him behind bars, Kenneth served 28 years and was released in 2016 and he was set to be deported but he actually fought that saying that he got death threats and if he should ever come back to Jamaica he will be tortured and he will be killed all because he testified against Delroy so the last update I got on that was in August not August April of 2020 this year of course saying that he still might be deported regardless of the death threats and everything so I don't know like waiting on an update on that as it relates to the Renkos gang they are no more because after Delroy's arrest they practically collapsed so who wasn't imprisoned kind of just gave it all up or some of them even they're not here today we can just leave it at that after all of this do I really need to give my thoughts do I my nose said we're not going to hear my thoughts anyways. But I was giving them during, you know, all of that mess with me. I talk about a blog and whatever, whatever. But let me put it in a more structured form for y'all. This is just another case of greed and ego. Because I am sure, and, I, and I've said this before. I'm going to say this about Flipper. I'm going to say this about, um, is it Jean? Jean. Um, which was my first episode. I've said this about these types of episodes. Listen, all Delroy did have to do is get enough money, put the money in our one business, and then go about in business. And he would be good. His kids would be good. Maybe the business would have failed, maybe, but he would have been on the straight and narrow, you know? As per usual, crime does not pay crime doesn't pay and i said this all the time and right now even looking through delroy's post i know that if he should come back to live his life again he would not have chosen to do half the things that he would have done he would have stayed on the straight and narrow because prison prison and not one nice thing i'm talking about it he said it him say yo prison not nice and to be in prison for literally double the time so he did 30 years as a free man out in these streets and he has done 
30 years in prison already and I'm sure that that 30 years in prison odd. so the killings could have been avoided it's just a done mentality like you disrespect me I'm just up approve it that's where the ego comes into play because you now make certain people get away with certain things simply because you are the done and you have to have a certain image and ray and taste so that is what happened unfortunately he is going to die in prison unless he gets some legal help and can get out and live as a free man but i don't know it seem it seemed well sticky upon him crime doesn't pay guys crime does not pay and that is the end of my video <laughs> and thank you so much for watching if this is your first time here i have other crime and conviction videos y'all can go and check those out and subscribe to my channel and do all of them nicest there i want to hear your thoughts on this case i love to hear your thoughts on this case so just leave them down below in the comments them and we will have a discussion on all of these things and as per usual, remember to be a beautiful soul, not just a gorgeous face. And until next week, Monday, mwah, 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 mwah. bye. Delroy sold his crack. <laughs> sold his crack. Del